once again, uh, it's uh, Mob Deep with the Survival of the Fittest, the tune that says Friday morning. And then it's a webinar here from uh, southern Sweden, uh, connecting all the, the world with Crunchfish. And uh, I hope you're having a good time this morning we are sitting. Uh, we will have uh, one, may, well, almost one hour show, and it will be all about Crunchfish today. And I'm looking here at my 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 friends uh, joining in. Joachim Samuelsson, good morning. Good morning, Johan. Good to see you again. Yes, every Friday morning, CEO Crunchfish Group, if you don't know him. And then we have uh, Investor Relations Manager, Erik Berggren. Hello, good hello. Morning. Good morning. Hello. How are you today? I'm great, thank you. Great. So, what are your expectations? If if you say one hour from now, and, and the people are well, you're joining in, feeling a bit, mm, oh, this is not a good day. I don't really know what I'm doing. Give me a reason. In one hour, they will be fulfilled with atmosphere and and well, and, and wish for the future. What have you told them about, Eric? Well, I think. Um... This, this uh, webinar is all about understanding the history of Crunchfish, going back all, all the way back prior to the IPO, understanding the structure of the, uh, the company's, the, uh, the shares and the warrants of the company, understanding the financial structure of the company. And uh, we will also, of course, give, uh, spread some joy as always. Uh, but, but the I think what, what they will know in an hour from now is understanding well, the history of the company and how it's been financed and how the company is intended to be financed the years ahead. But then I can hear a voice inside my head. The history of the company. Boring. Why should I listen to this? Why? Why is that important? You are Kim. Well, it, I, I think it's always uh, important to know where you, you came from. Uh, and, yeah. and, and I think a lot of people know countries, I think, uh, um, I guess from the IPO f um, forward, uh, we, we, will, we will be a little bit on the memory lane today. Uh, not too much, but, but I think it's, it's, it's interesting to give a perspective of what happened uh, before the IPO, but, but also looking ahead. Uh, and um, the other thing I have to say, this is today, Johan, this is happy holy. You yes, know, it is. one billion Indians <laughs> can't be wrong. Uh, you know, no, they're they all can't. celebrating the best, best sort of uh, festive season ever. You know, they smear colors in their faces and they run around and they are just having fun today. This is uh, holy. Uh, they are celebrating in India today. I think, so we you, have... I think you joined the holy a few years back, Joachim. Isn't that correct? Yes, yes. There are some uh, fantastic dance uh, movies uh, of me uh, dancing at the Holy Festival and all smeared in colors. Now, it, it's, uh, it's a great... Uh, I, I'm going to take this holiday to Sweden. We, we, we are good at importing all the uh, holidays here in Sweden. We've missed Holy. I don't know why, but yeah. uh, I'll, 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 uh, I have a whole bag of uh, colors that I bought two years ago. I have to bring it. Is it, is it that uh, we, you want to import it because you're not allowed to get into India anymore since then? Is, is, um, is, is... I, they closed the borders <laughs> yeah, just after. I, so I think they closed okay. the entire country. So it, it wasn't just me who could come in because I, I was there just a few days before the pandemic broke. Uh, you know, there okay. was this story in India that, uh, oh, please don't celebrate Holi because you actually smear colors in people's faces. But they sort of said oh. something of the equivalent. Nobody puts baby in a corner. They said nobody stops Holi. Sort of. So the party was still on. Last and year, nobody... they did cancel it. But but uh, two years ago when I was there, then uh, nobody stops Holi. And nobody stops you, Joachim Sorensen, I believe that's the <laughs> saying here. Uh, okay, uh, so I, I think it's very important to to understand the history if it's a it's, if it's a country or, or a company or whatever it is, uh, because then you will get the feeling for the future. So I'm very curious about this. It will be just the three of us today, and of course all you participants joining in. So please, uh, if you have any questions or well thoughts, just to use the, the the chat forum, and I will be glad to pass the the questions further on. So let's start with the presentation. Mr. Samuelson, are you ready to go? I think so. Uh, can you see my uh, screen? Yes, we can see your screen. Excellent. At so, least yeah. I can. So yeah, so, this, this, uh, this time, every fourth week, we take a little bit of a broader uh, topic. And uh, we thought it was 
quite appropriate. It was supposed to be a digital cash uh, topic today, but they are, as we said, celebrating Holly. Uh, so uh, we swapped the order uh, and it will be uh, a more of a, I think a, a webinar, which is uh, focused more on our investment community uh, to understand a little bit the shares and warrant structures of, uh, of, of company. Uh, and, and what I thought of talking about is uh, then, yeah, shares, warrants, but also how it all relates to our funding uh, going by, all the way back to uh, as we sort of started uh, the company. So start, starting with our shares, um, as many people know us here, a uh, publicly traded company, we are publicly financed, financed now, uh, traded on NASDAQ, uh, first north growth market, I think is the full name of the uh, list we're on. And I'll, I'll talk a little bit about how you could look at our for our for the future. And, uh, and then, as I said, going down the memory lane on um, uh, before the IPO, which was in 2016. But five years or six years, so a little bit five and a half years ago, this was at uh, Dagens Industri, sort of the, the heading, really. This was the share everybody wants to subscribe to. Um, we, we were the uh, we had about 1 million share for the public and the, the public asked for 29 million shares so we had a, it was hugely oversubscribed uh the whole emission that we did when we did ipo uh, the initial public offering ipo um was 4 million shares and so we took in 60 million uh, the price was at 15 and uh, the interest was huge. The story was all about um, ARVR. Uh, we did have a chapter uh, on that we had something else that was proximity related, which has now developed uh, over the years to become what we now have as digital cash. But it, it was very much the story. The front page was this uh, beautiful girl sitting here in, um, in uh, Westerhamnen in Malmö and uh, with a VR helmet on her head. That year, VR helmets were the Christmas present of the year. So it, it was huge uh, with VR at, at the time. And, and this is sort of what, what sort of uh, happened here. Counting down. And as you can see, uh, we, we actually, we, we got that rope. And I, I was quick to ask the NASDAQ guy, can I nick it? And he said, um, well, well, yeah, well, yeah, maybe, yeah, you, you, why don't you just take it? And, and so we, we sort of took the whole, uh, that sort of, uh, uh, yeah, piece of equipment from NASDAQ uh, down to um, sort of a, a, just a fantastic party that we had at uh, our headquarter. Um, but he, he did call me uh, on, uh, on the Monday and he said, I, I've got so much, uh, so much people uh, who, who has been complaining about that you gave away the one of the sort of, you know, you can't give away that. So can you please send it back again? But, uh, and as a nice person, I didn't say that I lost it during the party, but uh, so we did the DHL, the, um, the rope from the, uh, from the uh, yeah, stock exchange bell. Uh, we had it for uh, at least a, a, a party here. And as you can see here, this is Nick Skröder here performing. Uh, the beautiful girl in the background is his girlfriend, Amanda Jensen, who was sort of there as, as well attending. And to the right there, you, you see Oscar Algren, who is the uh, chairman of Westerhamn uh, Corporate Finance. This is the company actually that took us, did IPO. And I, I remember he said, are we gonna go to, uh, you know, uh, in, in Stockholm to Café Opera. And I said, no, I have another idea. Do you like Carl Pedal? And he said, I love Carl Pedal. And then I said, well, then I think you like this idea. So we had uh, Nick Skröder uh, as the front man playing uh, basically at the musical Carl Pedal. And, 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 then, and then you can say all the, the, the pickup line. Do you want to join me? Go to the office and, and look at the rope. And the, but you didn't have it. So. Yeah, 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 I know, I know. But it, it was a fantastic party. And as you know, we, we had plans to actually redo the whole thing. But as the, uh, unfortunately, I think we, we felt it wasn't appropriate five years later to do exactly the same party. Uh, but we had the plan. Uh, so we, t we toned it down a bit and we had a great thing here at the five year anniversary. Uh, thanks for everybody who, who did join. We had uh, still Nick Skröder there, but he was doing uh, instead Kim Larsen as you might, might, and he's setting that up as a, a new musical now when he's playing sort of this Danish uh, 
uh, again, rock star uh, from the, uh, what is it, 80s, 90s, uh, gasoline and... Uh, gasoline. Vagodunu, Lille Du, yeah. Uh, anyway, we, we were, the hype was enormous uh, at the beginning, uh, and it was all about AR, VR. As I said, uh, November 11, 2016, to the left there, we went IPO. And uh, after two minutes, I think, we were trading at 46. Uh, it went up to 46 immediately. It came down a little bit. Uh, it closed at 37 and a half. Um, and after that, it was uh, quite a boring, long, you know, it, 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 it went south. Uh, and we were down to about 10, I think, in 2017. Um, and um, I, I think the what really happened there was that the the VR market sort of died. Uh, we had 10 or I think even more uh, big projects with big players who wanted to do things with VR and, and saw gesture control as something. But then the VR, all these projects were canceled. Uh, and we started looking at AR instead, augmented reality, uh, where you have glasses, where you look at the world instead of going into a, a, a virtual world. And, and uh, we, we've been on the AR track ever since. Then there, there was an, another hype. Uh, we were starting to talk about that. Let's use this proximity uh, technology to go to, into uh, mobile payments. And, and we were starting to have an, an early, uh, the story was around the blip it story. But, but I think in 2017, things happened where uh, there, there were interests uh, for uh, that we are actually coming with another technology, it sort of started there really. And uh, the blip, it was something that we launched uh, during 2018. And then, um, but, but yeah, I think when we launched blip it as a name, nothing really happened. But when we came in 2019, this was in February, uh, we said that we had created a relationship with Swish. Uh, the stock price went from three to 30 in, in just a month. Uh, it became a real hype, you know, from three to 30, that's a 10 times, uh, uh, going up thousand percent sort of in um, in a month uh, a lot of hype around that uh, and then um, after that I think the the next story that came about was India we were we were saying that we were going to focus on the Indian market and we went to uh, me and, and Paul we went on a trip early in February uh, I came back again for the March trip this is when I was dancing and celebrating Holly at the end of that trip and then came the pandemic as you know and uh, it wasn't until sort of a year later when I think we think we were, were, were getting sort of more serious and that we were getting uh, into relations uh, with a lot of more customers that we got this whole offline story, uh, really talking about offline and launching that product. Uh, and and the, the share price, as you see, uh, it sh sh shut up from, we were at sort of something like, I don't know, 11, 12, and then it went over 100. Uh, extremely fast, but I'll, I'll tell you a little bit uh, why that really happened, uh, because I think it was inflated by artificial means, really, that is, was completely outside our control. And then we launched platforms uh, that came in the Q3 report. Uh, it wasn't really well perceived. As you can see, the, the stock price actually went down because I think it was a bit of confusion for a while. You, you've been talking about offline all of the time, and now with a platform, uh, uh, you have online as well. Uh, that's very confusing. So that was a great opportunity to buy buying countries, I think, because we went down to uh, almost like 15. And then we, it's people who started to understand it a bit more. It went up, and now I think this is Putin helping us uh, to push us down to 1660. Um, but you can see, we, we've been up and down around this IPO mark of 15 uh, over all this time, uh, just trying to give you a, a, a timeline of really what, what sort of happened here. Uh, let's see if I can change this, yes. L looking into the future, I, I really would recommend, uh, uh, we, we, we do pay for this service, uh, and, and they, I think Alf Ripley is a very reputable person uh, who is the uh, chief analyst at uh, Westerhamnen, and, and they, they are doing a really good job uh, trying to explain all the time um, what, what's happening. This is the, the last sort of... Um, uh, report that is out. It came out, as you can see here, uh, at the 18th of February, uh, just after our Q4 report, our year-end report. He will put out a new one, uh, and he is working on it right now because uh, there is an update due. 
because this report do not include any revenues from digital cash online, which he needs to sort of take into consideration. And also the whole field of automotive within gesture interaction is not really part of it either. So there will be uh, an update uh, of this report. I don't know exactly where, when it's coming, but I know he's working on it. And I'll, I'll also recommend anyone who's interested in our, in our equity to um, you know, go to our website, crunchfish.com.webinars and, and, and look up this webinar on equity analysis. Uh, Alf did a really good job. He was presenting and explained a little bit uh, how his model uh, around discounted cash flow, flow and uh, how, how to look at crunches really. Because I think this is the best bet, I think, a lot of people have to try to understand what's going to happen in the future because he, 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 I think he has a good view of it. So looking for the future, I, I believe in Alf and what he has. But again, uh, if, if I were to sort of look at the country's equity development all the way back from start of 2010 when it was founded. Here you can see, th th this is from our public records. Uh, the, the, the graph or the, the table at the top there, is, it, it actually came from our, I, I took it out from our, uh, uh, when we went IPO, uh, the prospectus, uh, what, what it looked like. And um, it, initially the, they, they, they founded a company, 100 krona per share. Uh, they had only 500 shares. So since then, the, 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 we have had a, a few, two splits, actually. One which came just before I came into the company as the seed investors in, in uh, 2012. They split the, the share 1,000 to 1. So basically, if you divide that initial share price, 100 is then only a sort of uh, 0 0.1 krona. And then, as you know, we've done a, another split, or you may not know that, but we, you can see on the second graph, there's another split. So the initial price of the share was 0 0.01 krona, one euro. Uh, that, that was for the people who came in early, uh, the founders, that this is what they got their shares for. But we, we had a seed uh, round in uh, September or late uh, August here. And uh, that seed was for, uh, for 50. And again, that, that, that equates to five. I, and they were asking for actually uh, having um, what, what is now 10 per share, but uh, I, I was telling them that I think that's too steep. They were actually basically asking an evaluation of 50 million for the company. And I, I told them that I, I can value it at 25 at this point, but I'll, I'll put in the rest of the money you want, but we have to put that as a conditional uh, share, uh, shareholders contribution so they got their money but half was uh, like a loan and half was uh, sort of for equity um then we did another round um at, at the share price of 100 which equates to 10 today then another one at 15 yes as the ipo price and then um, we had one actually in as you can see on the second table here at 300 which equates to 30 but we that was a small um, sort of top up uh, investment we did privately. Uh, and uh, we felt it was uh, a bit too high. So we actually did a compensation round. If you see the one in uh, here on the, uh, in August, we, we, we did one where we compensated the one that, that did the first one for only at um, par value of the share. So a very, very low one. So it, it, essentially that, that whole round was at 15 as well or 150 then. Because we had a split just before we went IPO, uh, and the IPO, as you see here, was uh, in um, in uh, November at 15. Uh, we converted some loans as well, a part of this, and then we've had uh, two rounds at five only. Uh, one which was really quite painful. I didn't at all like that one in 2018 at five. Uh, we had another one follow up uh, just a half a year later at five again. That was after we got the uh, Swish deal. We, we, we filled up the, the, again at five. We did one at 10, uh, which was sort of in uh, 2020. And then we, at the end of 2021, uh, we did this package, a uh, unit deal, where you could buy three shares for 25 and you got two warrants, uh, T09, uh, uh, warrant series nine, two of those for free. That was the unit emission that we did that uh, we did at the uh, end of uh, last year. So th th this is sort of taking you through all these rounds. And I think what's, what you can take with you is that even before we went public, even we, if, before we had digital cash or even this, that 
the, the price we were paying uh, as private investors, we, we were sort of paying 15, uh, which was, uh, so we haven't really, uh, uh, for me, it has been part of this company since sort of the, the seed round in uh, 2012. It, it's sort of been around this level all the time. We haven't really had any major breaks or may, maybe uh, much cheaper than this. So let, let's look at warrants as another instrument then. Uh, and I think there is sort of three levels of there. There, there are the traded ones, uh, the Crunchy's TO9 uh, that came with this unit emission that we had uh, at the end of last year. We have as well personnel warrants uh, and the current, the current active ones are too serious. We, tip, we tend to offer them in, they, they have a um, expiry in four years. There is two programs. Uh, there are people who got them in 2018. They will expire now in June, 2020. Two, and then we had uh, another round in 2020, and they will uh, ex uh, expire in June 2024. And then there is something called turbo warrants, which has nothing to do with us. And I'll talk about that a little bit because I, I think that's a dangerous instrument, really, uh, that I would uh, recommend you to stay away from. You, you certainly, you know, you if you want to take risk, but I think Crunchfish is volatile enough as it is, so. Uh, I, I think this is a quite dangerous uh, instruments to uh, get involved with, but I'll, I'll give a comment on that at the end here as well around the warrant section. But then warrants, what is that? Well, a warrant, warrant is a right to somewhere in the future to acquire a share at a certain price, a strike price. And to, v to value a warrant, how do you do that? Well, there, there is something called a black and skulls formula. Uh, that's a, uh, mathematical formula and, and very accepted uh, that it's used for uh, evaluating what, what is the value of an option or a, or a warrant. And um, th there are sort of two parts to um, an option value or warrant value here. There is the intrinsic value, and, and that's sort of a, yeah, a real value uh, that you, 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 you sort of just yes, looking mathematically, if, if you have the right to buy the share for uh, say, 100 and the, and the share price is 50, then yeah, the intrinsic value is that difference. You have the right to buy it for 100 and the, right now the price is 150. So the intrinsic value would be 50 krona. But there is always a time value as well, uh, because given that there is a, a volatility in uh, the underlying share, th there, is a, there is sort of a statistical chance that your instrument, your warrant or your option that you're holding will actually be valuable. And, and that is something called a time value. The shorter it is to the expiration date, uh, the lower the time value. But if there is a, a fairly long time, then the time value is, is certainly there. But I think it's important to understand that uh, the Black and Scholes formula calculated option value, and that option value has two, two components, the intrinsic value, which is quite easy to understand. It's just the difference between the, uh, what you can buy it for and what it's currently trading at. And then it is that extra time value as well. So if, if we're going to look at the TO9 warrant evaluation, because it's, it's, this is a bit of a hybrid uh, that we've done. Uh, because it, it does contain um, a, it, it, it's, it's built up this way, that you have a right that in December of this year, you have a right to acquire a crunchy share at the 30% discount to an average price that is calculating during the third and fourth week of November this year. So we, we will determine sort of what, what will be the strike price. It's not actually set yet. And this there will be a, a calculation of that during November, and, and then we will, you, you will pay that uh, during the first two weeks of December, if you have that. So you, you can see up to, um, this is that the intrinsic value, just, it's just a straight line. It just follows up to, uh, yeah, it, it follows up to 53.57. Uh, this is a 30% discount on the, the share price. So at, at 53.57, times 30%, you will get here to about 16 and a half. That, that, that is, this is the price of the, of the warrant, and this is the price of the country share. The reason why it has a bit of a, a knee here, a sort of what happens here, well, because there is an, here there is the a real traditional warrant actually comes in here, because 
you have also a right to acquire in December a country share, but the maximum price you will ever pay is 37 and a half. So we've made a cap there at 37 and a half. So even if the share price goes higher, you will never ever pay more for this share than 37 and a half. And if we take then this 37 and a half, uh, which you have to pay for the share, divide it with uh, that 30% discount, we, we arrive at that share price. So at 53.57 at Crunchfish, you, the value actually of the, the warrant will be, if this were today, because this, the blue line here, this is the time value, it would be something like 26. It has the intrinsic value of 16 and a half, but it also have this time value. And, and it's always at its peak at, at, the, uh, at the sort of the uh, strike price. So you can see how the time value, it, it actually goes starting to somewhere around here, it's starting to go up. And, and at the 57, uh, 53 mark here in the middle, it will be at this peak and then it will start to go down again. So the red line here, this is the, uh, uh, this is the theoretical value of uh, the TO share. Right now at 16, there is not much time value in it. Uh, I think it's five euro. I, I, I have that in the slide later. So most of it is just intrinsic value. Uh, so it's 30% out of this uh, share price we close that. And then there is, there is a five euro time value. But the time value, as you see, it will start increasing. So it, it will be an, a component to think about uh, going forward here. The personnel warrants we also have, uh, as I said, we have two issued schemes at the left there. Uh, the first scheme, um, it, we, we asked the, uh, the annual meeting for 700. We only issued 620. Um, when we do new founding rounds, these needs to be calculated in case the warrant holders have been, um, have, because they can't, they can't participate uh, in these uh, financing round. They, don't, they, they have a right into the company, but they can't participate. So you always do a recalculation. And right now the recalculation is sort of like one point, yeah, almost 21 shares per warrant is what they're allowed to do. So the dilution, the extra shares when they, they hear will be exercised in June will be another 749,000, yeah, almost 750,000 new shares. The strike currently is nine. So the ones who are sitting with them, uh, they, uh, th they will come in and this will be paid to Crunchfish, another 6.75 million. That's just nine times that uh, 750,000. That, that's how much Crunchfish will get here in June from these warrant holders when they convert. And the value, uh, as I, I, I use this Black and Scholes formula, there is an intrinsic value of 760. The time value is only five uh, euro. And so they, theoretically here, they, these are worth 765. There is another program that we uh, started after the uh, annual meeting 2020. Um, that also was 700,000 warrants. Uh, we have issued 700, 675,000 of them. Uh, there has been one recalculation and that was for this unit uh, transaction that we did here at the end of 2021. So now this translates into a dilution of 684,000 shares. The strike is higher because again, we, we do calculate what should the strike price be. We do calculate that similarly as a, a week or two. I think it is, yeah, I think it's two weeks uh, before uh, the board meeting. Uh, and and the, the price was trading around 23-ish. And then we, we double that uh, to calculate a, um, a, a, you know, come up with a reasonable price because these person, the people in the company, they don't get these for free. They buy them and they buy it calculated using sort of the black and skulls formula. And right now uh, the value is, there's no intrinsic value because they are out of money. Uh, and, but uh, there is a time value of uh, two krona. Uh, that's roughly what they're worth. But when these strike uh, or when they, uh, when they are converted in uh, June, 2024, the company will get uh, another 32 million into the company. To the right here, I have some future schemes. We, we did start one in 2021 as well. Uh, we asked for 500,000 uh, at the annual meeting, but the strike you see is in the moon really. Right now it's uh, 179.79. So no warrants has been issued of this one. And, and we only allow to, even if it's a four year scheme, we can only issue warrant uh, 
due, until the next uh, annual meeting. Then, then we, we close the program. And so th th this, is a, this is a program that will never ever be uh, exercised. There won't be any warrants coming out uh, in, in, into anyone's hands. But we, we will we'll probably ask for, a, a, at the next annual meeting, well, I know we will ask for it. I think we discussed that at the board meeting. So there will be another allotment. I don't know if it's 500 or 700 as we had before. Uh, again, will be issued within a year. We will calculate the strike price. Uh, it will be two times some average price uh, during some weeks in April of this year. And they will be sold uh, by Crunchfish to employees uh, at this Black & Skulls derived price. That's how it works. Uh, yeah, these instruments has nothing to do with us. Um, they don't provide any money to Crunchfish whatsoever. These are external players that look at that there is a lot of volume in Crunchfish and uh, they think it's, they can make money out of issuing these, these uh, warrants. Um, th they are more volatile than the underlying stock. Crunchfish is, is, is very volatile, as you know, but uh, they, they can create even more movement because how they work is that if, if sort of theoretically, if the Crunchfish share moves one krona, these instruments move two or maybe three or even four so they, they, they become extremely volatile. The danger you have, uh, and that's why this is super high risk, is that if, if you buy this, this sort of instrument for, uh, say, 40, and uh, Crunchfish goes down 10, if you have it geared by four times movement, the risk is that this will go down to zero. So you go from 40 to zero in no time with a drop uh, with, with Crunchfish of, of 10. So because you have a gearing of four, and, and, and then they are knocked out. They will never ever come back. They are knocked out and they, they become useless instruments. So, so these, they're called mini longs or uh, turbo warrants, I think are extremely dangerous to trade in, in a volatile stock, uh, which are volatile already from the start. And the reason why I think we got this spike, this sort of uh, Eiffel Tower, I think is, as it's called on uh, uh, technical trading is that, when they're going to issue those uh, turbo warrants, they need to buy shares. So they bought a lot of shares. I, I think up to a million shares were bought by these externally, external sort of companies who, who uh, issued those turbo warrants. So they bought a lot of, lot of stock in Crunchfish. But likewise, when these then, when Crunchfish then say came down a little bit, they had knockouts of their instruments that they, and they, they, they just flushed it into the market. I saw one morning when they sold in, in one minute, they sold 200,000 shares. And, you know, our volume is something like, I don't know what the average volume is, but say it's uh, 50,000 shares. So, so someone's selling 200,000 shares in, in two minutes. Uh, the stock market doesn't really pick that up. Uh, so that becomes, makes those very dramatic drops as well. So I think this, this spike that we got here was uh, very much artificially created by, unfortunately, these tur turbo warrants. I'm not happy about them, really, but I can't do anything about it, but just want everybody to know it. They are like warrants, but they, they are not, uh, it has nothing to do with us. It's just, in a way, creating uh, much more volatility in an already volatile stock. So uh, not really happy about them, but again, I can't stop anyone doing that. Um, I'm going to end with funding because I think it, it ties it all together. Um, and, and we've had three phases in our, our life, really. I think we had, uh, before IPO, we, this was all privately fin uh, funded. Uh, now we have a public funding uh, uh, being uh, on the stock market. And, and I believe that we probably will never ask for any more funding. Uh, I think the warrant funding that we actually are already set up to get uh, will probably be sufficient. Uh, for the future, uh, so no, that, that's that's what I believe. So this is a graph that shows you, in a way, the three phases uh, here. Uh, first, the private one. There was a seed round, as I said. Uh, this was uh, during spring of 2010. They they put in 50,000 krona into the company. I was part of the seed round in uh, this was in 2012 in September here or August. Uh, we, we put in 17 million. Um, uh, or I, I should I, I probably should have put eight and a half million. Uh, that's probably a mistake of mine uh, because as it, the round was for seventeen, but as I said, half was a loan because that loan we used eight and a half of that into the round that we did here, the second round for twenty. Uh, that was then it, it went in there. We did another round. This one uh, the, was at fifteen uh, for twenty eight million, fifteen krona. 
And then we did uh, some uh, just smaller top ups here for 15 and, you know, at 15 krona as well. Uh, and and that this is where we were actually getting ready for the IPO. And the IPO came here. We took in 60 million. We converted a loan as well at the same time. This was all at 15. These, these two emissions here were at five krona uh, for 30 million and then uh, 24. And then we had one at 26 here. This one was at 10. And th this is the one uh, that we just did at 64 million, uh, where you also got these, uh, these uh, TO9 warrants. And if I go down here for the warrants here, I have 8 million. This is the, uh, uh, the personnel uh, warrants that will be converted that will uh, provide a sort of, yeah, just short of 8 million to the company. I don't know how big this will be. If we are trading over 53, it will be another 64. But under that, it's, it, could be, it could be nothing. If, 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 if the country share is worthless, this won't add anything. But it will be uh, anything over uh, a share price in countries of uh, 53 and a half, it will be another 64 million. Underneath that, it will just be proportionally uh, sort of going down, approaching zero then. So something like that will happen here. But I, I, I'm optimistic that this will actually give us a, a, a good, good funding. Um, without actually going out to doing a new round. And then in 2024, this is the uh, personnel program that is uh, running here as well, that uh, if, if this one is in the money, then uh, this will be uh, another 32 million. Uh, so in total here, we had, uh, I, I guess this should actually have said 65 here instead, uh, because I, I think I did a mistake here, uh, here. I should have just put eight and a half. But 65 and then add 209, we've taken in uh, being public. And then these warrant rounds will give us something like between uh, 40 and uh, 104. So in total, the company has actually put in quite a lot of money uh, uh, into it. Th this hasn't come yet, but uh, I think if we add these two together, we, we are up uh, approaching almost 300 million. So it's, it's a lot of money has gone into the company. Uh, respect to that, to all, all investors really who put in money uh, in, in, into the company. So um, I think that was what I wanted to tell. Well, well done. Thank you so much, uh, Joachim. And uh, I, I realize it's been a uh, fascinating journey. Um, and if you if you just just tell me about your expectations, if you go back, does the do the expectations follow uh, what's really happened? Well, I, I would say it's it's been um, it, it, it's it, it's been a really quite an interesting journey, as you say. Uh, and it's um, we we didn't right now. I think the main focus is digital cash in, in the company. We 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 didn't talk about digital cash in the beginning. We 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 talk about only that you could probably do a, a ma build a major market uh, providing gesture control to mobile devices. That, that's what we started with. Uh, we didn't we didn't know about AR VR, which was the story that we went to the stock market with because we were thinking of uh, controlling mobile devices. Uh, AR VR came about and we, we, we thought we had something really cool there and, and, and so did obviously the stock market as well. Mm -hmm. we, we were heavily oversubscribed as I said but then since then it has evolved. We still have that story but we also now uh, have taken this proximity technology of ours all the way now to be, become a digital cash. So I would say we, we couldn't have imagined where we are today uh, at the start, but right. uh, it, it's been many, many generations and uh, a lot of hard work. But I think we, again, that, that's, that's the whole theme here, the, you know, the Darwin theme, that uh, survival of the fittest, that you need to be able to adopt to the uh, to circumstances and your environment. And I think uh, that's what we excel at. I think we are just so, anonymous at that. So, so uh, from another uh, other perspective, is, it, is there is something that you would have done differently uh, that you are thinking of? Um, or is it just survival of the fittest you change along I the think, ride? I think it is that. I think uh, I, I can't see us navigating at the, what we knew at the time. Taken, I don't think we have really made sort of major mistakes uh, during, uh, during the journey. I wouldn't say that. I think we've always, I think, been truthful and honest and, and what we believe... Uh, were the chances and we've been communicating that and trying to do the best of it but i i think we um uh i'm, I'm glad how we have evolved but it's certainly been an evolution very much yeah. so. 
thanks once once again. Uh, it's time for uh, well broadening uh, broadening it uh, here. And Eric, uh, you are. I, I want your perspective. But first of all, if you're uh, who are watching, if you have any questions, please write them in the in the chat forum. I will be glad to read them and post them to Joachim and Eric. So use that forum. Uh, Eric, uh, just first of all, uh, what does an investor relations manager do with your words? Well, I, uh, I, communicate, to the, uh, I communicate to the market, helping investors understand the company and uh, ensure that the company comply with the regulations being a listed company. That's what an investor relations manager do. Yeah, and, and when, we, when you take this journey that Joachim just told us about, can you, can you give the same journey from a Crunchfish investor relations manager perspective, uh, what has changed in the in the way you uh, well behave and and uh, talk to investors uh, during this period? I, th I think it relates back to the um, uh, if you can recall the the um, the presentation I did a few uh, a few webinars back. It's about the uh, the message to the market. And uh, that's that's also how Crunchfish has involved as an investment case. Why to invest in Crunchfish? That is uh, also how the the how Crunchfish has been communicated to the market, and how we have been working on the message to the market. The, the investment case of Crunchfish. It has also involved in line with how the the shares and warrants and the financing structure has evolved. Uh, Crunchfish went, went uh, public in 2016, mainly on uh, AR, VR and uh, the gesture control. We have evolved since, including the first proximity, then Lipit. Now it's the digital cash platform, yeah. grown into a completely different uh, company and also with a different uh, investment story. And, uh, but, but, but when Joachim says this, well, now it's the, 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 the major story, digital cash, and that wasn't on board at the start. So mm. when you come to the investors and tell, oh, we will make, well, we'll get this along. Uh, what are the reactions? Are they just, wow, fantastic, curious, uh, go for it. Or uh, do we have, well, differences there? I think you always have differences, but what, what, what I can say is that my, my uh, if, I, if I listen into investors, those who have been part of the, as a shareholder in Crunchfish since the IPO, they, they tend to have been investing in the uh, gesture control uh, um, products and then uh, uh, joining with the digital cash platform. I think for them, that has just been a bonus. But uh, to those who invested at a later stage, they have mainly invested in the, the digital cash uh, investment case. So yeah. uh, it's a, it does, you know, it's a, you have to go to the individual shareholder to see their perspective of Crunchfish. So what I tend to do is listen to the investor community, seeing how they view Crunchfish and uh, be respond to that. That's that's yeah. mainly what I do. And, and you, Joachim, you're a, you're, a, you're a storyteller and you have your big heart and all the thoughts about the future. How have you changed your story when you talk about the, the company? Because, well, there are major shifts and it. Oh, oh that's, that's normal, I would, would say, but... Uh, Tell me about the storytelling development. We, it, it's certainly been a shift in that one. I, I think a lot of those, as, as I showed one slide earlier, that um, we, 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 we went to market and, and we decided deliberately when we went IPO that um, even if we, we felt we had something really cool in the proximity technology area, we felt that we can't go with two stories. Let's have one. And, and we went with the AR VR story. And uh, we, that's, that was the story we told the market. And, and, it, and at, that, at, at that time, it was an exciting story to tell. VR was uh, Ores Julklapp, uh, Ores Christmas present, the uh, Christmas present of the year. So it was a lot of hype around uh, VR. And I think we, yeah, we, we, we told just, that. Just story. after, the, was it the baking machine or what was it, the fidget spinner? Yeah. And then we well, have the... the year after, probably the year after. Yeah. <laughs> okay. No, but but I, but then again, I think we 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 felt uh, that the proximity technology, which we use for so social applications, uh, we we thought it would be great with the you can ex you you know you can discover people in your uh, who are close to you. We 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 felt it was a cool thing, but 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 we it wasn't until we we realized we probably have to focus this on uh, mobile payments, uh, and and that's that was the second then hype. And we told that story. 
uh, and that was we we had this collaboration with uh, uh, Clearon, and we 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 did a a way to connect um, connect sort of the uh, mobile phone with uh, cash registers here in Sweden. But then we went to India, and we realized that out of sixty million merchants, only two out of those sixty, two out of sixty had you know online connected the cash. Two register. or two million. Two. Two out of six, two, uh, no, two million. Sorry. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah there yeah. was, a, yeah, we yeah. we were talking to the two people. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, <laughs> no, I just, million, but there were not many. Uh, and we realized that what's the point of having this focus in India? And and that's where we thought, well, we, we probably should be thinking about uh, something else for India because we were then already liking India and we, we felt that what can we else do for India? And we came up with the story of uh, digital cash. That's, yeah. it, it all started two years ago. Uh, with uh, we filed a patent in in January, and um, two days later, Paul and I was on a plane to India. Uh, we, we Holly, Holly, in Holly. Yeah, well, uh, yeah, and uh, Holly came in March, and uh, that was on my second trip, just a month later. Okay. Uh, okay. But but it, but it's um, yeah. So we told the the story that, and and we got a warm reception really in India uh, for that story, and uh, and I think the stock market responded to that. And then we when we conceptualized it, so we found Viki. Uh, the the people who are doing our secure environment and we we you know we, this is really get, going to be real. Uh, yeah. so we launched a product last year. It was a lot of hype around it, but we then we started to feel that we probably need again something to complement because offline alone is a difficult sell. But uh, as a whole platform, online, offline, and now we're working on also having it on smart chips. We're having this digital cash platform uh, as we're calling it. I, I think we. Uh, this time we, in yeah. this fifth generation, I think we, we're getting some there. But but it's been storytelling all along, uh, yeah. and it, and it, it is important to I think tell a story. Uh, yeah, and the, and these and and these webinars are part of it because well we have every every second week we talk about digital cash, and then we have uh, every fourth week it's about the the um, yes, uh, yes. gesture, and mm -hmm. then every fourth week it's about crunch fish. So we we're trying to to get the, the, all the stories along. So that uh, it won't be too well, uh, too scattered. Uh, yeah, yeah, so and, and 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 I think that we we felt here uh, at the beginning of the year. We right now with the two new platforms, both on uh, Yesture as well as on uh, Digital Cash, we have so much to tell and 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 explain how it all fits together. So yeah. we felt it was just appropriate. We we need to communicate much more and and. Um, Quite glad that we we came up with this this sort of uh, format, uh, yeah. and and I think it works well to to educate uh, both our, our potential customers, but also uh, our um, yeah our investment. moderator our moderator. I'm I'm learning a lot, so <laughs> so I'm happy for that. So uh, tell me about shares. Uh, you talk about splits in the future. Uh, will 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 you split the share further? Or, or and then uh, yeah, well, well we could uh, potentially but but not at this price uh, it, it wouldn't have to go uh, much higher before I think we would even consider uh, doing another split uh, but uh, it, it could happen it's all about uh, I think it it, it would be uh, I think a board board uh, recommendation to try to do that but I, I think there's no plans for it at the moment no. at all no. so what about what about profits in the future what can you say about uh, when when uh, well any any uh, any ideas? Any anything you can say? Your uh, well, we, thoughts? We, again, I think we we need to get to uh, starting to create revenue. We, we've been talking about financing a company, and we, we we're looking at two to three hundred million kronas gone in from the investment community. We we need to start making money, uh, and 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 that will come. I believe, uh, I think mainly here from the opportunity we have within digital cash. Uh, we are we are you know very close uh, in India right now with. Uh, major opportunities uh both on the um, banking side both on the prior uh, payment services side and uh it, it's looking good uh, and i think the yep. yeah so i uh, you know it's, it's such a huge market uh the leading market in the world right now when it comes to digital payments and and we are there and and delivering uh solutions into that market so i'm, I'm excited yeah. about that eric uh, how how is it important is to to be successful with that I think uh, all all kind of uh, business uh, generating revenue is very important for a business. Uh, yeah, well, so. but, but but how, how do, do you need that now, or could it be in a year or two years? Well, what what kind of time span mm -hmm. are we talking about? I would I would say that uh, it is uh, at at the stage crunch is 
at the moment we are financed and uh, being financed i think we can we can rely upon our financing and not generate revenues from deals uh, to survive but uh, from an investor perspective and to keep the valuation of the company it would be important to generate uh, agreements that generate revenue yeah how important is the share price for for you as a company the, the, the share price of the company, the company is, of course, important to, uh, to attract investors. And also, the, uh, it's also extremely important to, in the, uh, to, attract, uh, to attract new financing. So you, you, can, you can look at it from different perspectives. But uh, as, as a shareholder, of course, you would like to see the value of the company increase over time. So from that perspective, the share price is ex extremely important. Do, do you know? Do you know how much of the shares are owned by the employees? Um, well, Joachim owns 25% of the company. And uh, uh, apart from Joachim, Paul Kronholm owns 4%. So that, uh, that uh, combined is 29%. And then if you look at the uh, other uh, roughly 20 employees in Crunchfish, I would say that Crunchfish is owned uh, a little bit over 30% by employees. Is that correct, Joachim? Yeah, and, and then you, you and then we have this um, warrant uh, facilities that are now expiring, and, and that they can convert that that they hold the shares. Uh, they can certainly sell as well uh, at that point, but uh, I, I think that will increase. We, we we've had programs before which actually were not in the money at the time of conversion. Uh, so people did buy some uh, you know warrants, uh, say in two thousand and. Uh, 16 when we went IPO, uh, but they, 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 these were actually, it were worthless four years later. But I think now uh, the one that which will be have a strike price at nine, I think have a high chance of actually uh, making uh, quite a lot of our, uh, you know, employees have been a long time uh, yeah. as shareholders. So, but, but I think Eric's right. I think about a third of the company, if you include a fully diluted company with warrants as well, I would, I would think that we are about 33% is owned by uh, people who work at Crunchfish. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, we have a question from uh, Frederick uh, Namnix. Uh, I hope I got that right. Hey, do the turbo warrant issuer need to buy the equivalent shares before they provide the warrants to the market? Or can they start selling the warrants and buy the shares afterwards? No, I, I think they actually, I, I don't know about these regulations. Again, these are not instruments of art, but I, I certainly saw that the, the turbo warrant issuer, which are completely outside of our control, they, they started buying uh, to, to get that protection themselves uh, in case, uh, otherwise they're very naked if, if, the, if the price goes up a lot. So they, they buy it beforehand uh, and then they issue this instrument. And then when they are knocked out, they, they sell the, these underlying shares again. I think it goes in that order. Yeah. Uh, let's just talk about uh, warrants before we end, end this. Uh, how many T, is it T09 uh, warrants are there in total? Do you say? Uh, I, I think there are uh, about, Eric, you might, uh, 1.7 million or something like that. Uh, 1.75 maybe, but, but it's a number, uh, that, that's all it is. Uh, that all came in that unit emission that we did uh, in uh, November last year. So uh, I think it's about 1.7 million or something like that. Okay. Yeah. And, wh and why do you have personal warrants? Uh, th that I think it's important to, uh, to, to attract, I think, uh, key people uh, and also keep people. Um, I think people are quite loyal anyway, because people are, not, I, I think a lot of our people are not that motivated by money per se, but, but I think it's nice to uh, that if we are, to become as successful as I hope we will, I, I think it's nice to share that wealth with uh, a lot of the people who have actually been sitting here and being here every day for us and, and done the job. So it, it's, it's, I think it's very, it, it's just nice to have uh, people uh, rewarded for uh, actually have put in a lot of the effort. Um, because I, I think a lot of these people are working at countries, they're not millionaires at all, and they, they can't really afford to buy too many stocks, but they, they are very important for the whole yeah. success of it. So we-, we uh, are, there, are there any risks with it? Yeah, as I said, uh, we, 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 when we issue those warrants, we, we, we set the uh, strike price twice as the uh, average price at the time. So uh, if now we are trading at say, 17 right now 
then we would issue, if, if, if this was today, we would issue a 34, uh, because then with the Black and Scholes formula, they will probably be, uh, they have to pay about maybe one krona, uh, something like that, one or two krona for getting uh, per warrant that and they buy it. So they take a risk with that, but it's, it's, it's quite small money. It's sort of maybe 5,000, 10,000 or 20,000 krona. That's the risk they take. Uh, yeah. And that could be worthless in four years, or it can convert to quite substantial sort of uh, money because the intrinsic value could be high, as we talked about before, uh, yeah. when, when they convert four years later. Uh, Eric, you, you, we talked about the, the, uh, the full year report, the analysis. Uh, if I want to read more, if I want to, well, where can I find it? Well, uh, you you have the Crunchfish uh, website. You have a uh, you have a segment called Investors on Crunchfish website, and under the Investors uh, site, you find all the information about Crunchfish as an investment, including the the financial reports and the commission analysis from Westerhamnen. So I'd I'd go I'd join uh, Crunchfish website to look for more information. Okay. I, I so you you I can, I can say. Um, we, we will we uh, know there are people that uh, prefer that we would uh, communicate more in Swedish and and I, I'm then glad to tell everybody that the, the annual report will be all in Swedish we, we have regulatory requirements for at least the uh, the back end part to be but but we thought it would weird to have that in Swedish and then the front end in uh, in English so uh, we will do uh, the complete annual report that is due out now in a few weeks uh, will be completely in Sweden, Swedish, and and we'll give give a good sort of overview of uh, of of where we are uh, as the okay. company. Yeah, and in Hindi also maybe. Well, that maybe for next year. <laughs> okay, great. So it's almost nine o'clock, uh, uh, and it's breakfast time. I've I've learned to know it's very important. Uh, just give me some kind of vision for the future. If I'm really well. Late on the well, I want to join in. I want to be a, a part of, of, of this. Why should I? I and you, you tell it it's undervalued. If if it if the story will will be just well a tenth of what you think, it will be a success. So just give us the short pitch of why you should uh, get into the get on to the, this journey. You again. Well, yeah, I, I, I think it is, you invest in, the, in a company with an extremely yeah, proven in a way record of actually being able to adopt to, uh, to the uh, circumstances. Uh, we're sitting with two platforms right now, one in gestures, extremely flexible, one in uh, digital cash, extremely flexible, which per se, even if we don't develop anything, just the platform itself are extremely flexible. And, and, and we are at the brink uh, at uh, getting those out in the market. Uh, gesture is already there. Uh, and we are selling that into the market, but I, I think for the digital cash side, we, you know, and, and, and the money is huge in this area, you know, digital payments, I think there are no bigger machine in the world than the world's uh, ecosystem for the digital payments. And we're coming within uh, a way to augment, uh, improve on all of the, the, that, uh, that market for uh, instant payments, for card payments, for CBDC, even for crypto. Uh, I, I think we have something fantastic. If we can just show that and start showing that, I think it's just an enormous potential in this company. And now Eric says, here, well, here, 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 here. No, but what I can supplement with is also saying that uh, Crunchfish has a very, very strong patent portfolio, which gives the company an underlying value because we have actually patented a lot of our uh, in uh, innovations. And I think uh, personally, when I look into... Uh, growth companies i look at the management and well i might be biased but i think joachim has a very solid track record and i uh, i truly believe in him as a uh, ceo yeah and i should actually value the webinars because they are ooh, oh yeah very, oh, oh yeah yeah yeah, yeah that. <laughs> okay thank you so much both of you uh joachim tell us about the future the next four weeks yes uh as i said we um Every second one is digital cash, but now as we swapped, uh, if, if I look four weeks ahead, it's going to be three on digital cash. Uh, quite excited about the next one. We will have an external presenter from ToneTag, being voted as one of the most promising uh, fintech companies in India. Uh, they're doing uh, great stuff with their ultrasound technology, and it's going to be their co-founder, uh, Vivek Singh, uh, presenting here. And, and we're doing cool stuff with them in, in, in India, and that's going to be on the 25th of March. 
Uh, 1st of April uh, will be a, a technical webinar and, and we have a lot of focus on a problem that comes up with uh, offline payments, which is double spending. Um, as you know, we, we've uh, come up with a cool patent lately uh, around how you protect for that. And there are more uh, mechanisms in place for how we in digital cash pro pro protect for double spending. But it will be an overall, we, we will look at security aspects uh, first yep. of April. Uh, 8th of April, uh, Joachim is back. And he, uh, or, or no, it's not, it won't be Joachim actually, it will be Daniel. Daniel Meal is on our head of R&D. He will talk about the whole process of uh, uh, training data, how we how we work with training data and what we produce, because that's the underlying for uh, the, our algorithm, uh, our neural nets algorithm. But we, we'll focus on the actual data. And then um, happy to announce that uh, countries will run uh, together with an Indian uh, accelerator partner, a CBDC accelerator. Uh, more information on that will come. This will be from uh, that accelerator uh, that we'll be talking about uh, how Crunchfish with digital cash uh, will uh, help the uh, CBDC community to realize uh, sort of all the requirements for CBDC implementations. And, and we will uh, implement and uh, together with a partner in India, an accelerator for that, inviting companies from India and all over the world to participate using digital cash for, uh, for that purpose. Well, thank you so much, Joachim, and thank you, Eric. And I think, uh, as, well, uh, my ending words would be that you all should join in and celebrate uh, Holly now. And uh, during this webinar, I researched a bit, and I really felt that it, it, it fits the current world situation. So we will all, uh, it's going about worshipping Vishnu, and it's all about an evil king. You, you will see the parallel soon. Hiranyaka Shippu was an evil king. He had special powers that made him nearly invincible and he wanted everyone in his kingdom to worship him. He was so pow powerful, he started to act like a god and punished or, or killed anyone who uh, disobeyed him. So Holly, Holly, Holly celebrates the triumph of good over evil. And there are various stories about its origin. The most popular legend in Hindu mythology says the festival marks Lord Vishnu's triumph over King Hiranyaka Shippu. And I will take that as a parallel to this world. So let's go for it. Holly, Vishnu, breakfast. Thank you. Fantastic. Thank you. You see the parallel? Yes. Yeah, I, I see. I, I, I certainly see it. It's, it's, it's yeah. perfect. Holly, <laughs> Holly, 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 bring out the colors and breakfast. And thank you all. See you next week. Thank you, gentlemen.